In today's video, I want to go through an update on the PlayStation 5 release date, how it's progressing, and a release date of November 13th is being floated around Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart. We got a big gameplay demo yesterday, got some more details on the game in Monster Hunter World. Iceborne is going to be getting its final update on October 1st, and we'll talk that at the end of this video. First up, PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X reportedly both launching in November. Microsoft will likely go first, and PlayStation 5 release date penciled for mid-November. A lot of articles are coming out, a lot of reports are coming out, but it's interesting to talk about it. PlayStation 5 will launch in mid-November, but a new report from VGC suggests Sony is eyeing the narrow window intensely. The website claims that in the UK, at least the platform holder has booked significant advertising for the week commencing 13th of November. I saw the date of November 13th as well as November 17th being floated around a lot. I believe the 13th would be a Friday. Let me actually confirm that right now. Yes, November 13th would be a Friday, while November 17th would be a Tuesday. Friday and Tuesday, generally speaking, are the days where the major releases do happen. I believe the PlayStation 4 was on a Friday. I remember getting out of school and, uh, getting 10 McChickens on a Friday and playing it all weekend. So hold up, let me actually figure that out. When did the PlayStation 4 come out? It came out November 15th of 2013. Can't figure out right now if that's a Friday. Somebody else can figure that out. But yeah, Friday makes a lot of sense for a console release just because it's the weekend. People are going to be able to, you know, get off work, get off school, and they're going to be able to just bum rush and play the PlayStation console and play all their games. I just think Friday works out a lot better and it works really well for a console launch. For video games, I can understand why Tuesday might be a good day, but uh, Friday, to me, I've been really liking that more and more games and uh, consoles have been releasing on Fridays. I just think it makes a ton of sense. The publication in v VGC noted multiple retail sources have mentioned the same general time frame, although it seems like the Japanese giant is keeping its partners somewhat in the dark. And obviously, with everything going on in the world with the pandemic, I really can't blame them just because a lot of this in is in flux. Uh, Nico Partners Daniel Ahmad is usually a very insightful in regard to stuff like this, and he noted, We expect Sony and Microsoft to launch next-generation consoles as planned this holiday, dis uh, despite disrupt uh, disruption to the supply chain earlier this year. Uh, due to COVID-19. Production for both consoles began at the end of June in order to meet demand for the holiday launch. While production is ramping up and component scarcity is less of an issue than before, we believe that logistics issues will be a barrier for both platform holders to overcome this holiday with the impact from COVID-19 leading to long shipping times and shortages on uh, store shelves during the launch period. We expect Sony and Microsoft to utilize air shipments, which will cost more to meet demand this year. At the end of the day, you gotta just take the shot uh, of the extra expenses. A lot of people are doing that. Look at all sporting events eliminating crowds. That's a big part of their revenue while running these uh, events without a proper gate. Everybody's taking hits. H however, you can maintain a business, run a business. You kind of just have to do what you have to do. And, you know, we don't even have to go into things like restaurants and places of that nature. They're taking a major hit. Yeah, they can use things like DoorDash and um, Uber Eats and all that stuff. But think about the big cut that is taken away when you do use services like that. Just everybody's going through hard times and every Everybody's trying to figure out how to finagle their way into running their business in the most optimal fashion that they can. And it seems like with Sony and Microsoft, they have the revenue, they have the backing where they can take a little bit of a hit on things like air shipping just to meet the demand for PlayStation 5. Because could you imagine... Like, PlayStation 5 demand is already going to be crazy. I think it's going to be exponentially higher than the PlayStation 4. And PlayStation 4, I got one on launch really easily, but I've booked my pre-order months in advance. And then after uh, launch right away, that holiday season, dude, it was a nightmare to get a PS4 for a couple of months. Uh, thankfully, the amount of units that were available eased up by uh, early 2014, but PlayStation 5, I think it's going to be an absolutely crazy console launch, and could you imagine that if the amount available would be like halved or something like that, even reduced by 30%, that would just make the console even more in demand, and the uh, secondary prices, secondhand prices would be crazy, and I really hope we don't enter an era where, you know, people are buying the PlayStation 5 and then reselling it on eBay for $1,000. Obviously, I do expect retailers to limit it to a console a person, but let's be honest, you can finagle that pretty easily. You can buy one, let's say you're selected by PlayStation to get a pre-order, then you buy one on Best Buy, then you buy one on Amazon, then you buy one on Walmart. Uh, yeah, you can finagle your way and get multiple consoles. I don't think it's going to be the most difficult thing in the world, and I don't think that's something that is really that easy to be regulated. 
Nevertheless, at this point, it is what it is. Let's just hope the console launches are relatively smooth. There was also a lot of notes that the Xbox Series X would be dropping prior to the PlayStation 5. At the end of the day, Halo Infinite being delayed, I think, puts a huge damper on that console. We'll see if they have a serviceable launch title to replace that. But yeah, if you don't have a single launch game at a high level and, um, you know, Sony launches with Marvel, Spider-Man, Miles Morales, maybe SOCOM, maybe Demon's Souls Remake, Yikes, that's uh, going to be a little bit of a hard battle to beat. Nevertheless, next up, I do want to talk Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart. It has 4K resolution at 30 frames per second and a lower resolution option at 60 frames per second. Guys, this is something I think you have to get used to. I think everybody shouting from the rooftops thinking that 4K 60 FPS was going to be a natural thing in all video games were going to be very, very disappointed. And we're seeing it over and over again with Demon's Souls with Ratchet & Clank. Don't think it's the worst thing in the world. Look, if we can run games smoothly at 4K and 30 FPS, that is is a significant leap up. If it's legit 4K, we see a visual upgrade. Dude, that is some good, good stuff. And if we can maintain that for the entirety of the generation, I would be relatively happy. And then you have the option, hey, dunk down the resolution a little bit, and then you'll get your 60 frames per second, which having the option, I think, is more important than ever, anything. Give consumers the option to play the game the way they want to play it, and for Ratchet and Clank, I don't know which way I'm going to go. Hey, these games are gorgeous. Maybe I'll want to play it at 4K at 30 FPS. Maybe I'll want to dock down the resolution and play at 60 FPS, but guess what? I have the option, and at the end of the day, when the game does come out as a part of the launch window of the PlayStation 4, which, yes, that was confirmed, I will be happy to make that decision there, but the fact that they're giving me that option, that is all always great. The news itself comes by way of Famitsu interview with Insomniac Games director Mike Adali. Insomniac Games further confirmed this on Twitter. Sony Interactive Entertainment Japan Asia localization producer Daisuke Ishidate added, starting in the latter half of the PS3 era, we chose to make Ratchet & Clank games with beautiful graphics by doing away with uh, the 60 frames per second on the PlayStation 2 era in favor of 30 frames, and the gameplay itself was built on the assumption of playing in 30 frames. This time, players will be able to choose between the 60 frames per second route of the PS2 era or the higher resolution and 30 frames per second route of the PS3 era onward. Either way, the game's gonna look really good. If you wanna play it at 60 FPS, that option's gonna be there. 30 FPS, that option will be there as well. I think I might go 60 FPS just because recently speaking, I've been playing a lot of games on my uh, monitor, just having uh, more of an engaging experience playing games on my monitor these days. And 60 FPS when you're that close to the screen really does come across. In my experience, when you're playing on a TV, 30 FPS is a little bit more uh, suitable, but when you're really close up on a monitor, it's really starting to become jarring when you are looking at 30 to 60 FPS. That's just my experience. Your experience might vary, nevertheless, very excited for Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart. Hey, they said launch window, but they didn't entirely rule out the idea of a launch day release. I'm not getting my hopes up, but boy, oh boy, this is my most ex uh, anticipated game of the entire PlayStation 5 library that has been released, uh, revealed, and I'm super excited for this one. Let's hope it's at least early 2021 around the time frame of infamous second son because that was also promoted as a launch title game and that was like march of 2014 so that's my two cents on that lastly i do want to quickly know monster Hunter world iceborne's final update launches october 1st and it adds a black dragon fatalis so that will be coming october 1st that's version 15.01 new monsters fatalis arc tempered uh, has been added as well and will be available in a limited time quest and then clutch claw boost skill added and allowing you to wound monsters easier the fact of the matter is capcom has remained incredibly dedicated to this game uh you know beyond what a lot of other games have seen i put this at the level of a game like no man's sky which consistent support free support on top of that yes they did iceborne but that was after a litany of updates adding free content on top of that and if they wanted to charge 40 dollars for iceborne hey it was worth it on top of that so Cool to see that wrapping up its updates. But that's going to conclude this video. Again, PlayStation 5 Series X, both probably launching in November. Microsoft will likely go first. Floating around that November 13th, November 17th release date. Hopefully, it's the 13th. That Friday release date, I think, would be great to see. Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart has 4K resolution at 30 FPS and lower resolution at 60 FPS. And Monster Hunter World Iceborne gets one final update on October 1st. Probably will be, you know, seeing updates here and there. But I imagine the significant updates are going to be tapered out a little bit. That's going to conclude this video sound off with all of your thoughts in the comment section down below thank you for watching goodbye hey guys we hope you enjoyed the video and if you did make sure to hit the subscribe button and if you're already subscribed do us a favor and hit the bell icon this way you'll be notified whenever we post a new video that's the best way to keep up with all of our uploads and we usually try to upload two videos a day and with the bell icon hit you'll be notified whenever we do upload a video as always thanks for watching